here is my little dog. Hi guys, I don't know if my head is being cut off here or not. I feel like my head's being cut off, but anyway, it is a glorious Monday morning here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Uh, it's about 11 o'clock in the morning. I think it's about 85. So we should hit our first 90 degrees of 2024 today. And, uh, I guess more like 95 degrees tomorrow and it is a Monday morning it is June <coughs> June 17th maybe 2024 and uh, I want to congratulate our everyone's favorite Doomer climate analyst Elliot Jacobson for making it back on to CNN News to talk about how how far down we are. If you heard that interview with uh, Elliot, or at least a little three-minute snippet that CNN had the balls to uh, to publish, I honestly thought when he was getting ready to say how far down we've gone, I actually thought he was going to say how fucked. I, uh, I think maybe some of the how fucked was edited out of that little uh, blip, but uh, that's just a hunch. But anyway, I'm not going to sit here and uh, talk about uh, the, the heat wave killing us all this week. I think that's being well documented in... Uh, Everywhere from CNN to uh, probably Fox News, uh, how fucked we are from the heat. So instead of swimming around in the deep end of the doomsday prophecy pool, every once in a while, here on Collapse Chronicles, I like to saunter over into what I call the shallow end of the doomsday prophecy pool, which is... Uh, the shallow end, just basically how humans, uh, you know, not, not looking at what we're doing to the planet, just kind of what we have become. Uh, we have become, and uh, the short little essay popping up in medium.com, uh, from somebody named, uh, he calls himself Matthew. Matthew asking the question, how did a generation become so stupid? Seriously, I think he's talking about Gen Z here, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but take it away, Matthew. Don't know how old Matthew is. I'm, I'm unclear whether he is of the generation he's talking about. Or is one of us boring old windbag doomers complaining about those kids? <clears throat> Take it away, Matthew, and swim around in the shallow end of the doomsday prophecy pool. And I am warning you that there are gonna, there's going to be some nasty language in here quoted directly off of the BBC. All right. Somehow, in one of those accidents that befall those who spend too much time on the internet without much intent, I came across a, a TikTok a fellow writer had pointed out. In it, a young American woman with one of those slightly dead-sounding L.A. voices goes on about manifestation. You roll your eyes but some of the, these videos have millions of views and likes. For the uninitiated, <clears throat> manifestation is the idea that you literally will good things into being. You decide you want financial abundance or a holiday in the south of France and you manifest it 
from the universe. It's like prayer, I guess, except unapologetically selfish. <clears throat> Elsewhere, the BBC, you know, that, that bastion of professional journalism, the British Broadcasting Corporation, I'm assuming that Matthew is from England, not 100% sure. Elsewhere, the BBC informs me that Megan Boney, Megan Boney, a random TikToker, has gone viral for a 20-second song she made up and sung in a stupid voice for a joke about wanting a boyfriend in finance with a trust fund. A song that has been remixed by David Guetta, whoever David Guetta is, and resulted in an actual record company offering Megan, a woman who has no musical ability or has ever written a proper song, an actual serious record deal. She turned the deal down saying, I was like... What makes you think I can write a song? What makes you think I could write an album? <clears throat> but nonetheless, she will, quote, ride the wave of the song, appearing in Vegas with Guetta and hoping to appear on Saturday Night Live. If this still is not enough, front page on the BBC News page today is a, quote, review of Taylor Swift's Eras Tour in Edinburgh. Review being in apostrophes because the BBC seems to have some contractual obligation to promote Taylor Swift with daily articles brimmed with insipid praise Review might imply considering, say, how the city turfed out, I guess mean that's English for kicked out, the homeless in order to make way for the avalanche of swift tourists, I think they're called Swifties, or the utter vacuity of her song lyrics. But no... All they care about is that one of the songs is, quote, believed to be about actor Jake Gyllenhaal. I've never heard of Jake Gyllenhaal any more than I've heard of David Guetta, although even I have heard of Taylor Swift. The whole thing reads like a post on a Taylor Swift fan forum rather than a supposedly impartial national news outlet whose basis is meant to include the avoidance of undue prominence. This is the same BBC who recently ran an article promoting the singer Kim Petras, P-E-T-R-A-S, who I've never heard of, uh, the singer Kim Petras, whose EP titled Slut Pop Miami, they call, quote, an outrageous, sex-positive, club-ready tribute to the joys of carnal pleasure, close quote. Petras' songs include Get Fucked, Cock Blocker, and Butt Slut. <clears throat> the latter song, Butt Slut, including these lyrics, quote, do it, do it, lube it, lube it, gotta put your back into it, smack it, smack it, ass attack it, push your balls up in my racket, close quote. I have to uh, have a drink of water after a push your balls up in my racket. Uh, <clears throat> do we point out 
that this ludicrously gratuitous and listlessly shallow view of sex is the result of a generation numbed by pornography and TikTok. No, it is, quote, according to the BBC, upbeat and escapist, reflects, reflective of sexual liberation, close quote. You cannot make this shit up. All of this feels like a weird joke, a parody culture, except it is not. The BBC, a half-respectable news outlet, wrote all of these articles with dead seriousness. That TikToker talks about manifesting without a single snigger, without an ounce of self-observation that what she is describing is utterly shallow, desperately selfish, and more than just unimaginably dumb. People are being bombed, and she is telling millions of her followers that if they just manifest from the universe, they will get whatever they want. Of course, perhaps this is just a warped perspective of culture the internet provides. Perhaps I just looked on the BBC on the wrong day, or perhaps not. We know this generation, and again, he never defines the generation. I'm assuming he's talking about people under 30. <clears throat> we know this generation is literally getting dumber. Test scores globally are going down, and we know 11 to 14-year-olds spend an average of nine hours a day looking at screens. The massive rise in mental health issues in the young since 2012 also reflects the fact that this effect is not just shallowness of culture, but that it is ultimately bad to those who grow up in this bizarre online world. From rising anxiety, depression, and eating disorders, we must at least acknowledge that whatever we are doing, the young are not being helped by it. Because we do not say or notice enough how bizarre this is, ejecting the homeless from a city so we can blindly praise someone who talks like they're a 14-year-old in a high school corridor and writes songs about nothing but countless vacuous relationships with ex-boyfriends is not to be celebrated. Praising an artist whose lyrics are butt slut, butt slut, doggy doggy, rough rough, should be met with despair. Record companies being so profit oriented and completely empty of concern for music or culture that they would offer a TikToker who has never written a song, a music deal just because she went viral should utterly appall us all. But it doesn't. Why not? Somehow we seem to have lost the ability to apply the perspective we naturally possess. Well, I would say uh, possessed. Uh, we naturally possess in the real world to the online world we are all spending inordinate amounts of time on. Somehow we have lost the ability to recognize that culture forms our world, that it is a meaningscape in which we exist 
and that it has actual consequences. The rise in youth mental health problems should tell us this, yet the BBC can run all these articles alongside mental health awareness articles without the slightest acknowledgement of their po-faced idiotic participation in the causes of said mental health problems. But perhaps I am shouting into a vacuum or I am an angry man yelling at a cloud or perhaps not. I don't think at this point there is anything that will stop us driving the wagon of culture off the cliff we have turned it towards, but at least our attentions are sufficiently absorbed that we won't have to notice, rather like pointing out the ludicrousness of Trump will never get through to a Trump supporter the same blindness afflicts those who think this culture is saving us rather than ruining us. But what can you do? Now I am going to go and manifest a cup of tea, then go outside to the actual world. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Matthew. I really wish I knew how old Matthew uh, was. He probably is just a boring old windbag boomer. Oh, Lord. But anyway, uh, I've got to wrap up this little... Uh, morning interlude rant because I have to return to the uh, Ithaca Free Clinic. Uh, I think uh, they're giving me a chest x-ray to figure out what in the hell is going on inside uh, my bronchial tubes. One month I have been dealing with this shit and Little dog, you are not going to the Ithaca Free Clinic to sit in a hot car. You are staying home in the shade. Get out there and enjoy your 95 degree summer day in paradise while you still can. Oh my gosh. And we do look at this tuberous begonia. Good Lord. I don't want to drop. It looks like the uh, pelican has found a froggy to eat. Uh, and I'm heading out into the blinding sunshine of Ithaca, New York. Where I think it was, what was it? Uh... Like four days ago, it was was a high in the 50s. Oh, Jesus, we're so fucked. Bye, guys.